What happens when you let a couple of supercar designers and engineers loose on a VAG SUV platform? Well, you get the spaceship that is this, the Lamborghini Urus. While it might seem like the purest, worst nightmare, it's still a Lamborghini and heart. And today I'm here to show you why this raging bull is still the ultimate super SUV. But first, a little history lesson. The Urus was not the first time Lamborghini decided to produce an SUV. In the late 80s, Lamborghini came out with the LM002, a military-type SUV that was meant to rival the Humvees back then. The LM002 wasn't well received, of course, since Lamborghini were known for making the Countach and Diablo during the 80s and 90s. The vehicle garnered the nickname the Rambo Lambo. Not only because of its macho styling and go-anywhere capability, but also because it was born out of the need for a military SUV, much like the more famous Hummer H1. Almost a decade before the LM002 entered production, Lamborghini produced an SUV called the Cheetah in an attempt to get a contract from the United States military. It was underpowered and suffered from poor handling, later determined to be because of its rear-mounted engine, in this case, a 190 horsepower Chrysler V8. Understandably, the military wasn't interested, they instead went with the superior Humvee. The Urus is meant to be the spiritual successor of the LM002. When you sit back and look at this boy, oh boy does it look like money, the Lamborghini Urus greets you like a punch to the eyes, as it should. The defining characteristics of a supercar typically include unmistakable presence, monstrous power and outlandish design. The Urus has it all. I love how from the side profile the car still looks like an Asterion concept from a couple of years ago. And if I stand next to it, it kind of looks like I'm standing next to a very sharp house because it's really big. If you look inside the rims, you can see why is it justifiable to have 23 inch rims. You will witness that this car has the largest brakes in a production car ever. 17 inch rotors and 10 piston calipers. For reference, that's like my Polo runs on 16 inch rims. Inside, you are treated to a dramatic cabin that is classic Lambo with fighter jet design cues all around. Just like this flip that you need to lift up to start the engine, like you're shooting something from a fighter jet, or this lever that controls. The drive mode uh, looks exactly like a throttle from a fighter jet. You get the Trada Sport, Corsa, Sabia, Terra or Neve, which sounds a lot like uh, Italian, which it is. All around in the inside, you're filled with carbon and faux leather, which means that it's just filled with luxury. And uh, once you start the engine, you can always experience The roar of the beast. Now, when it comes to the mechanicals, the Uru shares most of its internals with Audis and Porsches across the board. The chassis is shared with the Touareg, Cayenne, Bentega, and Q7. The engine is shared with the RS6, Cayenne Turbo, Panamera Turbo, Pentega and many more models. But it's the small tweaks that Lambo have done to make the Urus different. The engine sounds very different to any of the cars that it shares its engine with and the performance that the Urus provides can put many supercars to shame. Maybe this isn't the purest form of what a Lamborghini is, but it is damn near the craziest SUV you'll ever be able to buy. All in all, the Urus is exactly what you would expect when a car maker of the most outlandish supercars in the world tries to dip their fingers into making a family car. But while I admire what Lambo has achieved in making such a good performing car that still performs like a true Bolognese bull, the safety cocoon of technology in the Urus impedes from calling out the wild child in you. What do you guys think about the Urus and for 3.1 crore rupees, would you guys still pick this as your daily? This is Bhavneet. See you guys in the next one.